Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I don't the the last guy that was up. I'm not really sure what his problem is. I can tell I've been taught as a Muslim at the masjid, and that is Jesus is the Messiah, and we're awaiting his return. So I don't know what that guy was talking about. <laughs> yeah. Never, never, ever once was told that Jesus was Jesus was not the Messiah in any masjid I've ever been in. <laughs> so I, it's kind of embarrassing when they come up here and say shit like that, because literally that is not what we are taught. We are taught that Jesus is the Messiah and we're waiting for his return, period. Right. And yes, yes. That, and that's, that's the that's truth. That's Islam 101, man. Yes. Like if you, are, if you revert to Islam, um, the, when the new people come in and they go to class, and everything, that's one of the first, I mean, that's, that's just Islam 101. Jesus is the Messiah, we're right? Waiting on his return. We believe in the 10 commandments. We teach our kids the same stories of Jonah and the well and Moses and Ezekiel and all these things, you know, yeah. it's very, very similar. There is a lot of things, as you know, that differ on actual doctrine. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that there's a lot of misunderstanding between both religion or the followers of these religions mm -hmm. uh, that and these uh, misunderstandings do nothing but breed hatred and division, which I think is the last thing we need on this planet right now. Well, uh, I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. um, but it's unfortunately i was raised a christian i can tell you that much you, my grandmother okay. in my was, you, was a christian oh, lady me, and i, I spent just, a lot of time in church quick, going to sunday school, this, school church on wednesdays yeah, uh, Aliyah, one, one second please mm -hmm. one second. sure mm -hmm. um when it comes to truth and falsehood like truth is all is always going to be divisive you know it's always going to be divisive falsehood can be too if it's spread as yeah. truth exactly so this is why this is the only reason why you would see division amongst amongst let's say uh, christians and muslims because there is a truth that divides the christians and muslims um and so uh, but i look at that truth should, as subjective get, because what i believe well, and what you believe may not be the same but i'm definitely going to respect your beliefs right well, well, sure. I, I can respect you as a person and who has a right to believe what you believe. Right. Um, and you don't have to believe what I believe. Yeah, and yeah. I don't have to believe what you believe, but I don't have to yeah. trash your beliefs with my words. Mm -hmm. And I won't do that so, because so there are reasons why I left the Christian church. I was a yeah. member of the Southern Baptist Church mm -hmm. uh, growing up. And the reason why I left in my early 20s is I like to read a lot. And when I found out the deep uh, rooted involvement that the Southern Baptist Church had in slavery, um, I was done. So so what are your thoughts then on the deep rooted um, Islamic slave trade? There was, and they they actually uh, enslaved Africans prior to the Europeans, and I got yeah. a real freaking problem with that too. So and in this I, at this why, point why in my are you life, Muslim, Amalia? <laughs> huh? Why are you Muslim then? Oh, I've been a Muslim for a long time, and you, so, so you with time Christian. passes, I find out more things about different religions. Uh -huh. And the older I get, the more I'm just kind of re rejecting religion altogether. So, and, so this is, wait, wait, hold on. So uh -huh. hold, hold on a second though. Like, this is interesting. You, sure. rejected, you rejected Christianity because of the denomination of Baptists that had a, a strong I, hand in slavery. Well, I, um, I, that's not true. I rejected the Southern Baptist. Oh, so not Christianity, just not them. Christianity as a whole, but, okay. but my involvement with the Southern Baptist church. So okay. I stopped going to the Southern Baptist church and then my grandmother did too. Uh, my children racial and I brought that to her attention uh, after my first child was born and she was disgusted with it and so we she changed denominations and for a while I went on and went to church with her so, until so, I was about 28 maybe so you jo so like so like that's but that's where my confusion is so you you had a you had a pro you you rejected the Baptist church because you mm -hmm. saw that they had deep rooted um, you know, influence and, and, and involvement with slavery. I don't go to the masjid anymore, by the way. So uh, <laughs> there's do you, that. Do you, do you still believe that Muhammad is a prophet? Do I believe what? Do you believe that Muhammad is a prophet? Yes, I do believe he's one of them. Okay. So, all right. Do, do you believe, what, what do you believe about Jesus? Do you believe that he died for our sins? 
and rose again on the third day? Well, and see, and this, this, that belief does not come from Islam. That's one of the reasons right, why, because right. I've got Muslims in my family. It wasn't anything new, but that's one of the reasons I went towards Islam. No, I don't believe it's possible for anybody to die for my sins. I think I am responsible for the things I do on this earth, and I believe in Judgment Day. I believe I will be judged. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna show you something that Muhammad taught, okay? Mm -hmm. um, man, man, you're about to make me, you making me get up and get my laptop. Here, all right. I, <laughs> and I also appreciate the respectful dialogue because this is what I, I appreciate and enjoy. I don't like to debate. I don't like to go back and forth and insult people. And I, I just won't do that. I'm, I'm good with sharing information. Same here, same here. When I, when it comes to my platform, I like this. I like to just Good. talk. I appreciate that because I do too. Because we're intelligent people here and we can speak to each other with intelligence and respect. M most of us are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> most, most dude, of us are. you almost made me spit out my <laughs> Starbucks espresso here, dude. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, I've given so many people the benefit of the doubt, but I'm starting to lose, lose faith and hope in humanity, man. I am too. And it does don't even I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what you believe. All I care about is how do you treat people? How do you mm. treat your family? You know, are you out here making a positive con contribution to society? Or are you a burden on it? Yeah. That's that's really all I care about you, <laughs> who or what you are anymore. It's interesting. OK, so I think my laptop is dead at the moment. But let me just put it on the charger. Yes. And I do know there's a lot of things that Muhammad taught early on that we're not uh, in mainstream and a lot of places is not, you're not getting that information. And a lot of the places you're not getting that information and I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful. So don't come at me guys. Okay. Um, what I see is that you're more likely to hear about the original teachings and things like that in the U S when you start wow, that talking is so to Muslims from other, from like predominantly Muslim countries, it can change yeah, and it can change on the way that they interpret things. And I see that a lot of times the way that it's interpreted in some of these other countries fits the narrative of their culture mm -hmm. and not the religion. Yep, exactly. It's crazy. Um, and that's what this is me, 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 me and my friend, we went to a mosque, uh, a masjid, two mm -hmm. days ago and the sheikh you know we went up there to, we're christians we're and we're looking for dialogue with, with muslims you know right and we got put out we got put why out. what did you what yeah, you gotta got, be fucking kidding me where did you go <laughs> Wait, what just tell me what city it was it was uh, oakland it was in oakland oh my god oakland, i wish you were, okay so i'm in texas right now but i'm i'm my domicile is in oklahoma city mm. Um, and so I, I would attend the uh, Islamic Society of Greater Oklahoma City, and I'm telling you, they encourage Christians to come in there and talk and ask any questions you want. You would, they would never be thrown out of there. That's why I'm shocked that they they behave that way. That was actually the first time that that happened. I've been to a mosque, a mosque before, but quite a few times actually, and they were very open and, and had the conversations with me. But just that that particular one. That shape, he he had us put out like he. Yeah, because he came and defend, become defensive, and most likely extreme. probably didn't have any answers to your questions that and were. He, yep. yep. He didn't. He didn't want a conversation. He wanted to just like over talk and just lecture. He didn't right. want dialogue. I was like, just wanted to tell you why you're wrong. Yeah, yes. I can't stand them kind of people. Yes. So, yep. All right. So let me. All right, here we go. Opening this up here. Yeah, so Muhammad even thought that. Jews and Christians will be taking on the sins of Muslims on the Day of Judgment. And now, please give me your source because I want to look that up because I've never ever heard that. Absolutely. So this and when you send me sources, I promise you, you're not sending them to me just so I can figure out how to discredit it. I will read and learn. And if I agree, I agree. And if I don't, I don't. But I'm not going to be coming back and telling you, you sent me this and said that and all that crap. I definitely believe you. I believe you. <laughs> no, I won't. I got too much going on, dude. I've been a nurse for 26 years. I don't have time for people's dumb shit. If you keep cussing, I think the live they gonna oh, get. I'm me so sorry, I forget that, and I really need to watch my mouth. That's not that's not ladylike. It's all right, man. We good. We all working on something. We are, and mine's my sailor mouth. <laughs> all right, so let me turn this camera on, or remove my thing here. 
Okay. So this is uh, this is Sunnah.com. Have you heard of Sunnah.com before where they have all the hadiths? Uh, I for? have, but um, I tr I usually, and I'm not trying to be rude, um, but I be, I'm real careful about going there to read stuff because um, unfortunately a lot of the hadiths that are written are an opinion. And I don't like opinions when it comes to religion. You're just gonna have to give me facts and stuff. Um, I will go there though and see what it looks like and compare some stuff that I have and see if it matches. But please continue. I'm sorry I interrupted. Sahih Muslim. Huh? Yeah, I, I was Paul. I, I realized I was Paul's. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. In Sai Muslim, if we go to number um, 2767, where am I at here? Oh, here it is. Wait, nope. And my computer needs to wake up. It's slow right now. 27. Looks like, um, who is this? Anna? Um, uh, Nimas, please bring me up. I'm an ex-Muslim and I have a really, I have a really an answer for the lady, whatever that means. An answer for the lady? She's a Muslim. What are you guys talking about? She said she's an ex-Muslim and she has an answer for the lady, I guess me. An answer for what? You're a Muslim. Why would she have an answer for you? I'm not sure. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I should know better than to read the comments <laughs> when you're in the box. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So 2767. All right, here it is. So it's quite a few of them. Now here's a here's a interesting one, that D right here. All right. So it's a Sahih Muslim 2767D. Okay, so it says here, what's going on? It says here. There would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of a resurrection with as heavy sins as a mountain, and Allah would forgive them, and he would place in their stead the Jews and the Christians. Uh, Abu Rab said, I do not know as to who is in doubt, and so on and so forth. So it says here that Muhammad taught that... The Muslims, the sins of the Muslims will be placed on the Jews and the Christians, you know, and they come with as heavy sins as like as heavy as a mountain. That means a, a, a lot of sins, you know. So so even Muhammad taught that people take on people's sins, specifically the Jews and the Christians take on the Muslims sins. I, uh, I'm going to look into that further mm -hmm. because. Uh, I mean, in the 23 years, I've never, ever, ever, ever read that or been told that. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. I'm going to look into it deeper. If you, if you want to, if, I don't know if you want to screenshot or... I will. If you could put where it is, get a little closer and I'll screenshot it. Yeah. Oh, it got blurry. Back up a little bit. Right there. Right there. Okay. Okay, I will. I, you just, like I said, you got to be real careful when you're pulling up stuff on Google. And the only reason why I know this is because, again, of my profession... When I got my bachelor's degree, that's a big part of all it. All we did was research and paper writing. So we had to learn, didn't matter what it was, that you have to be able to um, identify your source as credible, right? Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to use those same skills that I use when finding information for patients and doctors and whoever on the Internet uh, when, I, when I look at this. So I'm going to use the same analytical things that I use in my profession to look at this and I will go into it unbiased, I promise. Beautiful. So thank you. I, I, and I, that's all I can ask for. So there's, there's a couple of them that say the same thing, but in shorter, in shorter form, um, there's 2767A. The one that I showed you was 2767D. So this one is 2767A. It says, um, Abu Musa reported that Allah's messenger said, uh, when it will be the day of resurrection, Allah would deliver to every Muslim a Jew or a Christian and say, that is the rescue from hellfire. You know, um, 
<clears throat> and the same thing here, same thing, just B, same number, but just now letter B. No Muslim would die, but Allah would admit in his stead a Jew or a Christian in hellfire. So we are, the Jews and the Christians are taking the place of the Muslims. Like if the Muslim deserves to go to hell because of their sins, Allah is going to have mercy on them by replacing them with us, with the Jews and Christians. Wow. See, and I've never read that or heard that. And that's not any part of the doctrine I've ever been taught ever. Yep. It's always that you stand alone on judgment day. Right. Now, now re remember, it's interesting because remember you said that you learned true Islam <laughs> really in the West, <laughs> you know, they, they're not they're not going to teach this in the masjid. They're not going to teach this when they're giving you dawah and trying to convert you and to, for you to say your shahada. They're not going to show you this when it comes to their doctrine on salvation. But this is here. And it's in Sahih Muslim, which is the second most authentic uh, hadith collection behind Sahih al-Bukhari. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have it's Bukhari number one and Sahih Muslim number two. They can't reject these, you know, so definitely take these back. I can't wait to see what you uh, what your conclusion would be to that. But I wanted to compare this. I brought to you this for a reason to compare this. Notice how it's Jews and Christians taking the place and, of course, unwillingly of the Muslims in hellfire, taking on their sins of other people unwillingly. Now, obviously, it should be impossible for just mere humans and really other sinners to be able to take on other people's sins. We're sinners. We're not worthy of doing that. We, we can't. We're not holy. We're not God. You know, we're just we're just human beings. There's no way I can take on another man's sins. Right now, the opposite here is in the scriptures, in the, in the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah teaches that we also have substitutionary atonement, that we have atonement for our sins, but it's through the Messiah, the Lord. He does this himself. Look, like it says this, Isaiah 53. It says, who has believed what he has heard from us and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. But surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Notice that it's a pure, it's the pure and holy Messiah that atones for our sins, not other sinners that replaces us, but it's the Messiah himself, the holy Messiah, blameless, pure, sinless Messiah, who willingly comes in and atones for the world because he loves us that much. This is what Jesus says. The complete, the complete dif difference <laughs> between what we see and what Muhammad taught. And what May I ask you a question? Of course. Do you believe that you'll be judged one day? Of, of course. I'll be judged for my works here. Okay, so what's the purpose of Jesus dying for your sins if you're going to be judged for them anyway? Well, so I'm not being, the, the, the judgment that I will be, re be receiving is not the same judgment that those who are without Christ will be receiving. I, the judgment that I will be receiving is what did I do in with my with my faith? What works did I do? What you know? What basically what is my reward? I'll be I'll be judged based off my works. What reward would I be receiving? Um, the difference with the judgment that I will be facing and 
you know, the sinner that without Christ will be facing is that they will be coming to a judgment of their sins. So because they don't have atonement for their sins. Understand? So like, um, so how does that apply to the Jews? It's, it's, it's the Jews. It's the same with the Jews. the Jews. Yeah. The Jews, those who believe amongst the Jews, if they believe in the Messiah and what he's done, they will be judged according to their works, what the, what reward they would, would receive. But the disbelieving Jew will be, they're going to die in their sins and be judged by, uh, for their sins. You know, just like everyone else who doesn't believe in the Messiah. There's no partiality in this. You know? Um, now, this is what Jesus teaches. He says... I have a question real quick, though. So I hear a lot of... Uh, every time someone dies, I always hear Christians say, yes, they're in heaven. Well, I don't believe anybody goes to heaven right now. I believe we all have to wait for Judgment Day. Do you believe that? That you have to wait to be judged with everyone before you enter heaven? No, I no. So the Bible... Paul, Paul taught this. He said that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So... When our spirits leave our body as believers, our spirits go to heaven and we are with them. Um, even in Revelations, it, it shows that when people were martyred, um, Christians who were persecuted and died for their faith during the persecution, they were in heaven before the altar of the Lord. You know, and they were asking him, when, when will you avenge us? When will it be time for you to avenge us? And he says, wait until the time of the persecution, the completion is complete. That's when it'll be time to go down and my vengeance will be set. So but what we see, about somebody that's not this great, wonderful person that dies? Are they going right to heaven or are they going to wait to be judged? Even well, if they believed in Jesus, but, you know, they did bad they're, things. They're, 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 in a, they're in spiritual prison. They're not, they're not in hell per se. Like hell, the hell is the lake of fire. That's, that's not open jail. A waiting period? No, not a waiting period per se, but they're like, um, they're in a place of, they're in a place of, of, of torment. They're in a place where it's not, it's not technically it's not hell because hell technically is the lake of fire, right. which is, which comes later. Right now they go to a place of spiritual prison. It's, it's Hades. That's, that's kind of like purgatory. That's, that's kind of how that's explained. Well, well yeah, but, but and, and as Muslims, our purgatory is kind of like, we believe that your grave while you're waiting for judgment today, they can either be a peaceful place or your punishment can start there. And it can end there, or it can go on, you know, for eternity, depending on what you did. Yeah. Yeah. So, so no, pur purgatory is different from this because it's not a place of purgatory is not a place of like punishment. Like, that's where you get like purified or something like that. Uh, this, this, they are being punished. They are being, you know, they're in a place of of despair and things of this nature. Okay. Okay. But yeah, so. <clears throat> so we saw where Isaiah taught that the Messiah will die for our sins, willingly will atone for us. And this is what Jesus says here in John chapter 10. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. He says, just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. So Jesus willingly lays down his life. He has the authority, the power, and the ability to lay down his life for us, for the sheep, to save us and give us eternal life. Instead of a Jew and a Christian taking on sins of Muslims, others <laughs> taking on other sins. That's, that's just, that is just so false. You know, so... Just a little a nugget. Yeah, there. I definitely, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to look into that because there is no way that I will ever change my mind about anybody being able to pay for my sins but me. Well, what, what, if, what if this is what God is teaching you, that God himself t pays for your sins? I feel like that if any one of these religions was overwhelmingly the truth, we would all know it. If he's our creator, 
and one of any one of these religions was correct, I think we would know without a doubt. Why would God leave us in this world not knowing? Look, look. With Bible, so, so much confusion. The Bible literally answers you this. Literally answers you. Watch this. It says. This is, this is Roman chapter one. Can you hear me? Because it sounds like it's loud in the background. Uh, it is my daughter's uh, bulldog, and I'm trying to get it to go where I want it to go, and it ain't listening. <laughs> I see. Go. Okay. There we go. Sorry about the noise. <laughs> it's okay. I, don't, I just don't want you to be distracted. No, I'm not. I was trying to get undistracted by getting the dog outside. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. I'll go right ahead. Okay. So this is Romans one. Right. And it's just what you just said. If one of these one of these religions were true, wouldn't it be obvious? Wouldn't it be obvious to everyone? Why would God leave us in the unknown? Why would God let all this confusion or let all this uncertainty be here? You know, um, and Romans one literally answers this question, literally answers this. Watch this. So it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. They have to believe first, right? And then it says, for in, for in it is the righteousness of God that's revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So it starts with faith, it starts with belief. Now he continues, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. The Bible says men know the truth, but they suppress the truth. They hold it under, they hold it down as if you're trying to hold a ball under the water. Like you ever go to a swimming pool, you try to hold the ball under water and it keeps coming up, but you gotta suppress it. This is what the Bible says, that men do, they suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. They know the truth. Verse 19. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. So God has made himself known to mankind. He's revealed himself. He's created things and all of creation points back to God. You cannot, you cannot look at creation and logically, reasonably say, God doesn't exist. I reject the existence of God. He made himself known through creation, through his creation of us. But yet we reject him. We turn away from him in our, our own unrighteousness, in our own disbelief. So we're without excuse, the Bible says. It continues, watch this. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. Remember I told you it starts with the faith, it starts with belief. Well, it says here that they knew God, but they dis we dishonored God. We don't give thanks to him as God, but they became futile in their thinking and foolish in their heart and their hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore, watch this. So because we rejected God as he is, because we reject the truth and suppress the truth, we turn away from God. Oh, she left. It's okay. This is a good message anyway. We turn away from God. We became fools in this way. We become fools in this way. Our hearts are darkened in this way when God clearly shows himself to us, but we reject him and we suppress the truth. So what does God do in response? When he has show, clearly shown us his glory, clearly shown us his divine attributes, clearly shown us his prophets, clearly shown us his revelation, and we still reject it, what does God do? Verse 24, therefore God gave them up God gave them up, gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. He says, okay, go ahead. God now removes his hand off of you. 
and gives you over to your own lust and your own desires, to your own disbelief. He gives it over. He gives it. He, he gives you over to yourself. He gives you over to yourself. This is what is called the hardening of the heart, similar to what God did to Pharaoh. When the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, it's not that God forced him to be disobedient. It's that Pharaoh thought rejected God, thought himself high above God. And so God took his hand off of Pharaoh. He took his hand off of Pharaoh and gave Pharaoh over to himself. That is the hardening of the heart. So he gives them over to themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So these people turn away from the true God and they worship and give honor and glory to a false God. Islam turns away from the true God and gives glory and honor to a false God. Hindus, Buddhists, and all these others, atheists, even other people, even if they don't believe, they put something before God that they put above the creator and serve that and what they've imagined rather than the true God, the triune God of the scriptures that we see. And so therefore, why this confusion? Why this disbelief? Because God gives you over to yourself. And in that way, we know that Islam and all the others reject the prophets.